welcome to Qatar 365, the show that offers a unique look around Doha and the surrounding areas. I'm Miranda Atti and on this episode we're enjoying the sun and the wind in order to unearth some of Qatar's most intriguing historical sites, from ancient forts to reconstructed palaces. Coming up, four heritage houses offer an extraordinary history lesson. We're digging into the past at Qatar's old palace, and we take a trip to a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Al Zubara. I'm surrounded by four heritage houses as part of Musharraf Museums. The exhibition showcases the foundation for the transformation of Qatar as it is today. And Shahrazad Kafour went on a tour for us to find out more. Four museums, all with very specific stories to tell. Dating back to the early 20th century, they're part of the redevelopment of downtown Doha. Like here at Bin Jalmud House. Just one of the spaces to explore Qatar's social history. Part of the mission of Bin Jalmud House is to honor uh, the contributions enslaved people made, the cultural and economic contributions to the state of Qatar, to tell the history of slavery that is oftentimes not really told in this part of the world. Rooms and corridors help explain this period through civilizations. As we move through this museum, we're gaining a deeper understanding into the past here, proving it's important for locals and tourists alike to acknowledge their history. Visitors can make a personal pledge to spread the word. The challenge was to explore and to show a history that is oftentimes an oral tradition. Having the technology alongside the usual didactic panels that you'd find gives, I think, a richer experience. The public can also experience the house of the son of the founder of modern Qatar, known as the Nexus of Mushareb because it unravels the story of this area. There is no doubt that the founding period is the most important in the history of Qatar. Sheikh Jassim was able to unite the tribes of Qatar to create national unity. Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Tani was able to establish ties between the international parties present at the time in the Gulf, Britain and the Ottoman Empire. Radwani House. Explore how traditional Qataris lived and view the site of one of the first archaeological digs in the city. I was part of the uh, team who uh, prepared the original drawings to restore it exactly as the same as before. So I was studying the old spaces and studying, of course, the daily aptitude of the families for the new generation. I would like them to come inside this house and experience the same feeling of our grandfathers. At Company House, witness the changes after the discovery of oil and the arrival of electricity. This was home to the country's very first oil company. Telling the story from the perspective of the oil pioneers and focusing on the human element gives younger generations the idea that we weren't always living in luxury and that there is a spirit of endurance and resilience. The stories uh, and oral histories and oral traditions that we know from our grandparents, we know now more about what Doha looked like and how it's organically developed. That's how we try to connect between the past and the present. And it's exactly this connection that historians hope future generations will continue to make to understand their future. Qatar's National Museum is full of history and heritage. Nowhere more so than right here at the old palace, which has been refurbished and restored to bring the past to life. And it's the perfect location to speak with Dr. Alexandrine Guerin, the museum's curator of archaeology and early history, who's been visiting Qatar's archaeological digs since the 1980s. Morab is really a very interesting site in a way that um, 
is the only site we have until now it is excavated from the early Abbasid period. It's a very important period in Islamic history. In a way, is the beginning of the Golden Age. When I came the first time in Qatar, I was in 81. I was a student in Sorbonne in Paris. And I was very lucky to participate as this first excavation of the French mission. And after that, I really fell in love with Bedouin people. So you came for the first time to the excavation site of Moab in the 1980s. How has that led you to your journey here? It was a wonderful experience. The first is really famous and a very large archaeological site. In a way, we have more than 240 cells and rooms, and we have at a mosque, we have fort. Is really a complete archaeological site for us archaeologists. What are some of the archaeological highlights of the National Museum? We built a lot of other models from big archaeological sites like El Khor, with an occupation from the 5th millennium to uh, the beginning of Islam in the 7th century. We organized 900 objects uh, approximately. And, uh, in some showcases, we have just five objects because we don't find a lot of archaeological sites or a lot of occupation at this period. And another showcase is more than 100 objects. And tell us about some of the objects we can see on display here. We are talking about the object that is, is really clearly a reflex the daily life and how the people were living, what they are eating, in which sort of pottery. And, and with all this information, we try to rebuilt the daily life of their ancestor in Qatar. And we're here at the Old Palace, which is part of the National Museum. It's so beautiful and peaceful here. How's it been restored and refurbished while still maintaining its history? We are really very lucky in this uh, new National B Museum because we really integrate the old one and we reuse all objects it was exposed before in this old museum. And uh, we work really very hard with architect and preservation and conservation team to preserve and not to rebuild, but really to make a new restoration of this site. And now is really a peaceful place, like you said, with the green and old trees and garden around. And uh, they continue in this vision, completely protected now by the new National Museum with the new architecture. Al Zubara is Qatar's largest archaeological plot and the first Qatari site to be inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. A bustling merchant town in the 18th and 19th centuries, how do these excavated remains serve as a testament to what was once a thriving political and cultural hub in the Arabian Gulf? Let's take a look. Al Zubara attracts many visitors eager to experience the history of this coastal region. Dr. Furhan Circle and his colleagues are mapping the location for new visitor trails. Archaeology is the tool to understand people who were used to live in Qatar and understand how they were living, what they were eating, what was the purpose, why they were in this area, and how they were connected within the Gulf and also beyond Gulf. It flourished outside of the control of Ottoman, Persian, and European powers. So it is important for the history of the region that it's actually the founding point of today's political landscape. The site includes the remains of courtyard houses and fishermen's huts, narrow alleys, mosques and even palaces. A layer of sand blown from the desert has protected the town, causing much of it to remain naturally preserved. The city of Zubara is an important city, a sample of regional cities. Digs in this area give us a good overview of the regional history and a concept about the city, the buildings, the architecture, the existing literary movement, the media, the defensive method and the extension of the walls that protect the water sources. The regularity of the streets and building layout are evidence of a town that benefited from well-considered design. 
and the perimeter walls offered much needed protection. Al-Zubara Fort was built by Sheikh Abdullah bin Jassim Al-Thani in 1938 as part of a complex system of defence. It's one of many such forts, and each one was strategically placed along Qatar's coastline, ensuring the country had overall control of both the sea and the freshwater resources in the region. Now the fort is home to a visitor centre, which provides further insight into what daily life was like in this pearl merchant town. One of the very interesting finds that we had um, in the last years was a pearl which was found in a Neolithic grave, which shows that the pearl fishery tradition was not just a tradition of 18th, 19th century. The pearl which was found was 6,500 years old and shows the continuity of the pearl fishery tradition in this area. The settlement was once a regional centre of the pearl trade, but after being fought over by various Gulf powers, it was burnt to the ground in 1811. The town was resettled in, but ultimately abandoned in the early 20th century, before becoming what it is today, a vital archaeological record of a lost era. What an interesting way to dig into Qatar's history. And that's all we've got time for on this episode. But if you have any questions, just reach out via our hashtag Qatar365. Thanks for watching. Do check out euronews.com for more. And join us again next time on Qatar365.